So let's see, uh, actually I started off opposed to the Union um, and I was um, probably one of the biggest opponents. I actually did things like run a survey of um, faculty to see how many were interested in unionizing. Uh, and I have a blog called UO Matters, which is kind of a muckraking blog about the university. And I was uh, pretty skeptical of the whole um, plan. Um, and I'm trying to think exactly when I changed my mind on that. I was skeptical because I didn't think it was a good idea to put the, uh, the tenured faculty and the, um, the non-tenured teaching faculty together. I thought that they sh should have a union, but I didn't see the benefits of the tenured faculty having uni a union, and I thought it would be complicated to have both together. Um, so I think I changed my mind. Um, we had a very uh, bad president, very difficult to work with. And um, he sort of convinced me that the faculty needed to have some uh, representation, some sort of united voice. And then I started, you know, meeting more of the union people, and um, I really liked the people who were doing the union organizing. And so um, that's how I got involved in union politics. And now I'm the treasurer of the union. Yeah. So uh, let's see. So it was an interesting time for faculty governance. The uh, University had been um, under the control of the Oregon University system, which was a statewide um, board of governors, and the um, basically Phil Knight and some of the university boosters were trying to get independence from the state board, so that they could have more control over the university. That wasn't something I was necessarily opposed to, but I um, was I thought that that would increase the power of the administration at the university. And so um, I think myself and most people saw the uh, union as a potential counterweight to the, uh, this increase in the administration's authority. And I think that's worked out very well. So, yeah. And so then uh, what happened was the, um, the, the State Board of Higher Education, before the new boards took over, decided to uh, fire the university president. This was Richard LaRiviere. And that was just sort of a stunning demonstration of how much authority they had and how little control the faculty had, as he was pretty popular with the faculty. Uh, so he was fired, and his replacement was a guy named uh, Bob Birdall, who was very authoritarian. Um, uh, hilariously enough, his academic research had been on the Iron Chancellor in Germany. <laughs> uh, I think that was kind of his role model. Uh, that didn't go over very well with the faculty, and uh, so as a result of that, a lot of people switched to the union side and started signing union cards. Um, I was the first person in my department to do that. Economists are sort of notoriously skeptical of unions, and um, I told my department that you know this was probably going to win, and that we needed to have some representation on it, and that I was going to uh, join, and uh, that they should consider doing that too. And I think all but a few of faculty. Uh, econ faculty then sign union cards and um, uh, and the card check election uh, you know was successful the interim president Bob Burrell kind of had to he tried to fight this he hired some very expensive anti-union firms consulting firms out of San Francisco um, I used public records requests and got the contracts and showed everybody on the internet how much this was the university was willing to spend to stop this, and I think that pissed off a lot of people. Um, and uh, then, once the union was actually certified, um, I wanted to have some involvement in it, and so I ran uh, to be treasurer of the, of the union. Yeah. So the uh, it's it's been very good, um, and I think. Partly because the first two years of the union, we had another very bad president, <laughs> uh, and a guy named Mike Godfredson, who we recruited from UC Irvine. And he, um, instead of being authoritarian, he just kind of checked out, and uh, we didn't see much of him. He never talked to the faculty. Uh, so um, the sort of quality of the administration went down very quickly. Um, that was when we were bargaining our first contract with the administration, which was a very contentious uh, bargaining campaign. Um, I had a huge amount of fun with that because the 
university through Godfredson had hired a local law firm, uh, Harang Long, Gary and Rudnick, that really is their name, Harang Long, <laughs> a beautiful name for a law firm, and uh, they um, harangued us for a long time uh, while charging us uh, $300 an hour each. Uh, I think the total cost was $600,000 for you know this bargaining session. Um, and they weren't very good at bargaining. The uh, union brought in Mike Maurer from the AAUP, who is a very experienced old-time uh, union bargainer, and Dave Cecil from AFT, Oregon, who was a very smart young guy. And the two of them just ran circles around the university's lawyers. It was hilarious. We would go to these meetings. I would jokingly um, sell admission for $5 to cover charge, to come watch the university's lawyers make fools of themselves. Um, so we all had a great time with that. And in the process, we sort of you know, got the feeling that they were so incompetent that we um, knew more about running the uni university than they did. And I don't think that's totally true, you know, that um, there are many good administrators, but there were many bad ones too. And this gave us the sense that we um, we're figuring out a lot about how to run a university through this bargaining process. Um, and we did. And so, very interestingly then, I think this is one of the accomplishments both of the union and the administration, is that uh, the administration kind of realized that we were not trying to destroy the university, we were just trying to have a say in how it was run. And that we had, you know, some experience of that. And they then actually hired two of our executive committee people away from, <laughs> away from the executive committee and put them in the uh, university administration. Um, that was sort of a, a pretty strong vote, in, vote of confidence on their part in the good intentions of the union. So uh, now I think we have a new president, um, a guy named Mike Schill from the University of Chicago Law School. Um, I think he's a little skeptical, of the, more than a little skeptical of the unions, but uh, he seems to be quite willing to work with them. Uh, and the, we finished up a new uh, bargaining session for a three-year contract under his you know, administration. It was so much easier. It was um, completely boring. Uh, <laughs> nobody would come to the bargaining sessions because there was no excitement. Instead of having these $300 lawyers to bargain against, the university hired a you know, regular administrator with experience bargaining with unions, and it was all very polite and civil. and. Um, and uh, effective. So uh, now we have a pretty good contract. Um, we were able to get sort of a regular system of raises, which makes it uh, much easier to recruit people you know, the, when they know that they can expect to get um, reasonably re uh, regular pay increases. We've got a lot of job protections for the non-tenure track faculty, which um, turned out to be very important. So. Uh, a lot of solid accomplishments, accomplishments like that, but mostly I think just um, this has not degenerated into an antagonistic relationship between the faculty and the administration at all. Um, quite the contrary, we seem to be working very well together. Well, um, I um, am pretty happy with the way things are going now. I, you know, I didn't get into this because I was a strong believer in labor unions. I've actually um, become much more uh, uh, convinced of their effectiveness now, having you know, been in one and seen, seen how it works. Uh, and maybe we've got an unusually uh, good one, but um, it does seem to be very effective. And the people in it do seem you know, to be very concerned about sort of long-term interests of the union, not or of the university, not just their own you know, pay and so forth. Um, so uh, there are sort of two schools in the union. One wants to run it as sort of a um, professional organization that looks out, f you know, for its members, and the other wants to have some sort of political outreach where we sort of you know, support the broader union movement um, and. Um, we seem to have a pretty good compromise worked out about how, how we um, do that. Uh, uh, so I don't really see any changes that I'm sort of really pushing for here. Um, it's apparently very likely the Supreme Court will destroy the union's uh, funding model with a ruling that'll come out in June. 
which will mean that um, people can get the benefits of the union's bargaining uh, without paying anything for the services the union provides. And um, that will make it a little more difficult to fund the union. Since I'm the treasurer, I'm worried about the implications of that. Um, but uh, I sort of think that there is enough support for the union. People have seen enough solid accomplishments now that uh, we'll figure out some way to deal with that and, and, and keep this going.